Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with the perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk around during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and to Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up and quickly go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, 
and the Jews who came with her also weeping. He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They t said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you would always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they might believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is one of those stories where the Gospel of John reminds us of the other Gospel tradition, especially the figures of Mary and Martha. Lazarus is new, we don't have him in the synoptics, but he plays a major role in this story, in what happens to Jesus afterwards, and, and maybe implicitly in the Gospel. Help me think a little bit about Mary, Martha, Lazarus. Why, they're the, why are they the characters in this story? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we encounter uh, Martha and Mary um, in the Gospel of Luke, and uh, I think everybody knows that story where um, Jesus comes to uh, their home and um, uh, one of the gals is out uh, busy getting lunch together and the other was uh, sitting there by, uh, by the feet of Jesus and she has chosen the better part yeah. and that is Mary who has chosen the better part. Uh, that is to be there at the feet of Jesus. Now, hmm, we could go into whether uh, that's a good judgment or right. not, but that's the way the story that's right. goes. Try so, preaching that to a bunch of Protestant women. That's right. Uh, or Catholic women. Or Catholic yeah. women, exactly. That's right. So um, there's a kind of polarity between Martha and Mary uh, in, embedded in the tradition. And uh, I wonder if John uh, plays on that a little bit. Uh, I'll get back to that yeah, in just good. a sec. Uh, but then there's Lazarus, and Lazarus who is well and duly dead here, yeah, according to this clearly. story. Um, yeah, the, the story goes that um, uh, he, Jesus is told when he comes to um, uh, deal with Lazarus that he has been in the tomb for four, four days, days and he stinks. Yeah, that's uh, a <laughs> major underlining of the reality of death, I think. That, that's right. So he's well and duly dead. Um, uh, and uh, so this is not uh, a miracle that can be misunderstood as a healing. Exactly. And I think that one of the things that John is interacting with um, is some of those other stories of resurrections. Uh, that we have in the synoptic accounts, the daughter of Jairus yeah. or uh, the son of the widow of Nain. Uh, so there's a, there's a series of resurrection stories and they tend to be modeled on uh, stories about the prophets, on Elijah and Elisha and what they did in resurrecting people from the dead or from near death. Yeah. And in each of those other cases, uh, the dead person could be construed as not really dead. A little you know, ambiguity. Little, little, uh, yeah. in a coma yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. And, Jesus yeah. and, and death back. is recent. Right, so uh, I think John wants to insist here that uh, Lazarus is indeed dead. And then he has the story of um, uh, Martha and Mary. Oh, by the way, uh, there may be a precedent for uh, Lazarus in the figure of Eleazar in uh, Luke, uh, who, uh, who um, uh, the, the, uh, the beggar mm -hmm. uh, who, was, uh, uh, ascended, who was put in the bosom of Abraham. Right, 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 right. right. I think uh, that's a foreshadow or another could, version of this story? Well, I don't know. Okay. It could be a remote be. inspiration. Yeah, yeah. 
In any case, we have um, mm. uh, Mary and Martha uh, reacting to Jesus, who, who clearly has delayed his entry onto this scene to be sure he comes Absolutely. at a time when Lazarus Absolutely. is dead. You, yes, indeed. Uh, you wonder about the compassion of yeah, Jesus yeah, no, no, here. Yeah. Dramatic effect, marvelous, compassion less clear. Right, uh, mm -hmm. and you wonder what's going on in, right. uh, in our evangelist. So uh, Martha comes onto the scene and greets him uh, in an effusive way and seems to recognize him for the important, uh, even divine or quasi-divine person that he is. Um, but does she really mm -hmm. get it? Right, I think it's a fair question. D does she really understand that um, uh, Jesus is in some sense the, the key to life and death? I, uh, the, I think she's in some ways in the same position as uh, Martha is in, in uh, the Lucan account. Yeah, that is, uh, in a position that's somehow called into question by the rest of the narrative. Yeah, yeah. And then Mary, when she comes on to the, the scene, when she's told that Jesus is coming, uh, she rushes out to, to greet him, so she's um, doing something similar to the Mary in the earlier story. She's there she at is. his feet. She, she throws herself at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. She worships him, yeah. in fact. She shows by her bodily action yeah. uh, what she believes about him. So it's not simply a matter of verbal confession. It's a, it's a, a matter of, of concrete action. Yeah. And I think that, that um, contrast is probably meant to be uh, taken into account. But Jesus says more or less the same thing to both. He does. And here's where there's um, an interesting theological play going on. The insistence in, in this that I am, right, in the yeah, here right and now, here, right here. the resurrection yeah, and the yeah. life. And yeah, uh, I'll raise them up on the last day. Yeah. But resurrection is something you experience in the encounter yeah, with Jesus. Absolutely. I think John is, uh, is really strong on that point and then trying to figure out what he means by that and how the two affirmations, resurrection on the last day and resurrection in the here and now, Fits. hang together yeah, yeah. is one tricky. of the theological challenges. I don't know how... No, it's, I, it's a huge theological challenge. I mean, it seems to me that this, he, he does that ego and me we've talked about before, mm -hmm. only what he is now is resurrection and the life. But as I read that, the present tense of the I am is very important. I know that my brother will rise again in the judgment at the last day, and Jesus' response is, right here, right now, I am resurrection and life. So that whatever else, whatever else eternal life means for him, it takes us way back to John 3.16, they may have eternal life. Eternal life is not just life beyond the grave, though I think it is that in John, but it has something to do with the, with the power of the eternal and the life that we now live. Now, how we play that, I'd love to hear you on that. How do we play that against the assurances that in my father's house are many rooms, I'm going to prepare a place for mm -hmm. you? That doesn't drop out entirely. No. Um, but it gets highly qualified by this strong sense on the presence of resurrection. Yeah. Uh, let me come back to um, that text in John 14 about uh, in my father's yeah. house there are many mansions. And I think, I think it ties in very nicely to um, what I see John doing with his Christian tradition here. If you, you go back a little bit and think about the controversies about resurrection among early Christians, because most early Christians believed in some way or other that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Absolutely. Um, when I say most, uh, we're just holding out the possibility. Yeah, there's somebody out there somebody, we missed. Yeah. 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 Uh, but they, they differed, I think, on how they understood mm -hmm. that. And we can certainly see that difference uh, bubbling to the surface in Paul's dialogue with his uh, Corinthian congregation in 1 Corinthians Very 15. Very much so. yeah where he, he wants to insist on the reality, the objective reality yeah. of the resurrected Christ, but he also wants to nod in the direction of the rational beliefs of these, these folk and say, uh, flesh and blood. Yeah, this is not, not, going this to, is you know, not just going to be it's not you the body walking. As, it's not right. Bartlett returned. It, there's a transformation yeah. that's going to take place. Yeah. And so I think John in his own way is wrestling yeah, with that. Yeah, I do too. Uh, and I think John is also uh, in some ways tying into the language of early Christians uh, that again we meet in Paul in uh, Romans where referring to the baptismal yeah. uh, ritual he said in baptism we have died and uh, we have died with Christ and therefore let us walk in the newness of life. Uh, Paul nuancing it but there's a death and resurrection there, now, experience now. in baptism. Yep, yep, absolutely. And you see that in Colossians too yeah. with a little less nuance. We have died with Christ and we have exactly. been raised with yeah, Him. Exactly. So Christians can talk in resurrection terms about their rebirth experience. Uh, to get back yep. to the Nicodemus Absolutely. episode. And so I think there's a tie in here yeah. between John 11 uh, and John 3. And rebirth and resurrection both re refer to the same event in the life of the believer coming to life in the here and now. Uh, that gets us then 
uh, to that Last Supper discourse and the many mansions. Yeah. Uh, I've, uh, I've come to understand that text is in some ways John's uh, equivalent to uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, the so-called rapture mm -hmm. text. Mm -hmm. Because what Jesus says in John 14 is that I'm going away and coming, right, coming back, back and yep. I will take you with, with me. me yep. So it doesn't use the lang language of rapture, but uses the lang language of gathering up, which is, I think, related. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I don't want to go into rapture stuff, but I think there's a Good, connection Good, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can but, really wade deep. Go uh, on. In, indeed. Um, mm -hmm. it, but what I do want to point to is what, what happens after that in John 14. Okay where Jesus talks about coming and being with his disciples, he and the Father together. Yep. And so his coming back and taking them to himself is not an eschatological event, it's an element of relationship, that he comes to dwell in them in the here and now yep. with his Father. So again, relating it to Paul and thinking about how Paul could say, I live now, not I, but Christ mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. John says equivalently, you live now, not you, mm, but, but I, the Father and, Father and, and I, I in you. In yeah. you. Yeah. And when you live in that relationship, yeah. you live the resurrected life. Yeah. You have been reborn. Yeah. Now, this is still at the level of symbol and image and metaphor, right. and I think it has yet to be cashed out, but I think that's where John is going with it, taking these, these eschatological categories, not denying that there may be some sort of future yeah. reality yeah. Uh, that we cannot fully envision yeah. in our limited uh, physical sensibility, but nonetheless saying whatever that reality is, it's grounded in and is continuous with the reality that yeah. you experience here. No, I think that's very strong. By the time you get to 1 John, which I think comes out of the same community, I don't know about whether you do or not, but at least the same kind of stream, there is a, that remains, but there's a sense we don't yet know what we will be. There is this, the mm -hmm. future eschatology comes back in. But I do think for whatever reason, John's emphasis is over, he, I don't think he denies that future moment, but yeah. over against it, now is judgment. Now is life, right. now is resurrection. Yeah, this is one of those themes where uh, we've alluded to this on a number of occasions. Uh, people have seen um, levels in the gospel. Yeah. Like someone coming in trying to correct exactly. things. Yeah. yeah, get the orthodoxy back in. Right, but if someone were correcting things, why not get out the objectionable stuff? Yeah, no, yeah, I think it's general. intentionally yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's part of a, a coherent theological yeah. statement that John is trying to make. Well, we come up with our categories and we say your realized eschatology, mm -hmm. your future eschatology, or your free will or your predestination. But John didn't know he had to worry about our categories. That's right. right. He, just, <laughs> he had a story to tell. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, uh, Lazarus is, is beloved in this mm. story. And there's this beloved disciple who's somehow witness for all the scenes of the gospel, mm -hmm. or at least many of them. Is, is Lazarus the hidden beloved disciple? There are some people who think there so. There are, I know. Uh, and uh, we ought to pause for just a minute on the beloved yeah. disciple. He, he appears with that phrase, that is, this yeah. is the one whom Jesus loved, or the disciple whom Jesus loved, uh, explicitly at the Last Supper. Right. And at the Last Supper, he rests on the bosom of Jesus, as we'll see. Uh, and then he appears at the, uh, the foot of the cross, right. and uh, there's a little tag there about he has, uh, the one who has seen these things has, has borne born testimony, witness right. to, to them, and his testimony yeah. is true. That's yeah. probably a reference to whoever this beloved disciple right. is. And then he's there um, at the empty tomb. We're going to be yep. looking at him a little later. Yep. And he's finally there in John 21 right. at the fish fry right. on the Sea of Tiberias. Right. And so there are four places yep. where he appears. Um, and uh, I'll be darned if I can figure out yep. from any of those four places who he is. Yeah, me neither. So I just thought maybe you'd had uh, it and no, we no. could move on. Uh, no. Uh, but so, uh, some people say, well, look, there's a... There's, there's that love, reverence. Here, yeah, so he loves him. Yeah. Uh, I think this is another very clever move on the part of our evangelist. There may well have been someone out there mm -hmm. who was a disciple of Jesus mm -hmm. and sort of stands at the source of the tradition that Jesus, uh, uh, that John, John the evangelist loves, yeah. represents. Yeah. But I think the evangelist, when he came to write the, the gospel in his current form, adds this character. He's not in in the Synoptic Gospels, right. adds him and adds him in a way that you can't figure out who he is. Mm -hmm. Because you know what's happened over the course of uh, the history of reading this text? People have gone back to it time and time yep. again trying to figure out. Absolutely. And just about any named <laughs> disciple yeah. of Jesus uh, in the gets uh, a shot biblical tradition gets yep. a shot. Yep, yep, yep. But maybe if you keep going back long enough to the fourth Gospel, mm -hmm. you'll finally find out who the real mm -hmm. witness is. And who is the real witness? We all know. The one and only witness. Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. yes. Yeah. 
No, I think it's a device to hook you in and get you uh, encountering I taught, Jesus. I taught my, one course I taught on John one time at YDS. I told him, on the whole, the right answer to any question I ask you about John's gospel <laughs> is Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's the witness? Jesus. Who's the bread of life? Jesus. <laughs> it worked extremely well. <laughs>